Hi, Sandy. Welcome. We will get started right at 7. If you have a few things you need to do, grab your catalogs. Hi, Denise. Yes, Denise and Sherry. Hi, Sherry. Hi, Dawn. Welcome, everybody. Hi, Joyce. Hi, April. Hi, Valerie. Welcome, everybody. Hi, honey. Okay, I'm glad you did, April. Three more minutes. Hi, Debbie. Hi, Bev. Nancy, how are you? Beautiful Sunday here in California. It was 70 degrees. Hey, Rosemary. Welcome. So we sat out in the backyard from 1 o'clock to about 2.30. Then the shade took over and uh, for us Californians, it got a little chilly, so we came back in. But it was beautiful. Hi, Tammy. I hear it's supposed to be the same way tomorrow. It snowed in Georgia? Really? Wow. Two more minutes. Hi, Diane. Australia, wow. Helping with the baby, that's awesome, Nancy. That I'm so happy for you guys. Hello there, Connie. I start promptly at seven, so thank you for your patience. One more minute. I got on a little early just because sometimes if Facebook gives me a little bit of problem, I have a few minutes to straighten it out. So that's why I get on at five or six till. There's Jennifer, hi. Wish I had a story to tell for the next half minute, but I really don't. Hi, Carol Schaefer. Okay, it's seven o'clock. Thank goodness that took forever. <laughs> Thank you, Carol, for sprinkling. You're awesome. Thank you very much. Okay, so if you have your mini catalog with you, we're gonna turn to page 66 and page 67. I was telling a friend of mine um, that I have a stack of stamps that I'm trying to get through here on Facebook Lives, but I have so many that it's taking a while because I've always liked to show you more than one thing to do with your stamp set so you know how versatile they are and to give you some ideas to run with. But tonight I start, I'm starting with Well Suited. That's what you will, that's the whole suite you will find on page 66 and 67. And I'm going to go back a little bit and use some items that I used um, from the Always Suite on page 11. And I'm going to incorporate a couple of other little things. Hi, Annie. Hi, Mary. So um, the first card I'm making is completely what is meant to be made with this suite. But then I'm going to show you some ideas to make this suite for women, a fem some feminine cards. Hi, Diane. 
And then I'm going to go completely out of the box with this set at the end and show you something you can do with this set um, that might help you see how versatile this set really can be. Okay, so for the card that I'm going to make tonight, um, you're going to need the Handsomely Sweeted Bundle, and that's on page 67, like I mentioned. Hi, Julia. And um, Basic White Cardstock, page 143, and In Good Taste Designer Series Paper. Now, I'm using the In Good Taste Designer Series Paper because I didn't get everything in this suite, and now I'm kind of kicking myself because the DSP would work really good with these cards. But the In Good Taste works well too. There's um, quite a few pieces of DSP in there that will, that'll work well. Um, and then um, also I'm gonna use um, Knight of Navy ink. Those are, all the inks are on page 142 and 143. My paper trimmer and my Simply Score tool, page 151. The two, two, uh, 2020 22 enamel dots on page 158, and then your snips, your bone folder on page 159, and then all your adhesives are on page 162. I'm using liquid glue and dimensionals, and the regular and the minis. And then, of course, you should always have your silicone craft sheet around and your chamois, the chamois, and the silicone matter on page 163. When I switch over to talk about the other cards that I made, how to change up this bundle completely, I will be incorporating some uh, craft cardstock. Hi, honey! And um, some watercolor pencils, the blends uh, pens, and not the blends, the blender pens, and uh, the te tastefully textile folder. I'm just mentioning the things that I used on those cards. And um, then when I switch over to the female cards, I, I use the strawberry bundle, uh, strawberry builder punch on page 44 of the little mini from the, and then the Sa celebration DSP and the love you always specialty paper on page 11. Okay, so those are all the things I used. Let me close my laptop and get that out of the way. And before we get started, I want to announce the winner. I don't think, hi Maria, hi Robin. I don't think I saw her on yet. I might have missed her, but she gets to pick and I will get a hold of her if she's not watching tonight. But la these are some of the cards that we made last week. Hi Clay, oh my grandson's on tonight. This was the card I actually made last week but all these samples, um, I was gonna give whoever won a chance or a choice, they can pick whichever card they want. And the winner is, and I always have a hard time pronouncing her last name, Carol Karolowski. So she's gonna get to pick one of these cards. So Carol, if you watch the replay or you get on later, just let me know which card you want and send me your address. I did look and I did not save it. I think you've won before, but I didn't save it. Hey, Reiko. So um, I'll need your address to send you the card that you pick, okay? So just private message me and we'll get that taken care of. All right, um, let's get started. I'm gonna put you down to my desk. Hi, Hope, and um, we'll get started. Okay, let's see if I need to push my... This always gives me a little bit of... I have to watch that I don't push any wrong buttons or else we're in dire straits, right? Okay. All right, so if you would sprinkle, some of you already have. I would thank you very much. I appreciate that. That is how I grow and get more and more people on my site every Sunday night and Tuesday afternoon. Hi, Barbara. And Pinky says hello. Pinky goes everywhere I go when I go on my incentive trips. She gets put in my backpack and she goes with me. 
Um, actually, the girl that gave Pinky to me is on watching tonight. Her name's Nancy. So that's my little Pinky, in case you were wondering. Here is my hostess code. So if you'd like to place an order with me this month, and your, your order is under $150 before shipping, handling, and tax. Feel free to use this hostess code. If your order is above that amount before the tax and the ship, shipping, do not use this code because you will be the host and you will get to earn the free merchandise. You can shop with me here at this address. Just take a snapshot real quick with your phone or your computer and you'll have that address. And, um, or if you need me to do that for you, just let me know and I'd be happy to place your orders anytime. And thank you once again to everybody who's ordered from me already this month. You will be getting a thank you card from me at the beginning of next month for that. Here's the celebration catalog. Just in case you don't have a catalog and you don't already have a demonstrator, please let me know. I'd love to be your creative coach and help you with all your stamping needs. So, um... I do require an order be placed once before you get the catalogs or you can pay for the catalogs in advance, whichever way you'd like to do it. Just let me know and we will work it out. Let's go to pay. Uh oh, I saw a mad face. Somebody's mad about something. Tell me what I did wrong. All right, now I see hearts. Here's page 66. And this is, in case you don't have a catalog, this is the suite I'm using. It's geared towards men. And here are the bundles I was talking about and the DSPs and the Baker's Twines that are all in the suite. It's super, super cute. We've always asked Stampin' Up! to give us some items that we can make so we can make masculine cards. And Stampin' Up! always listens. So that's why we have Well Suited. Now, um, I forgot to mention, so, well, I wanted to show them to you, um, so I'm going to show you some snail mail I got this week. Hey, Cindy Johnson. Hi, Robin. Um, okay, first I got this one, and she's watching tonight. This is from Joyce. She sent me a check in the mail, and this it came in this gorgeous card. Look at this. Oh, my gosh. And she even put a little note in here that I could take off if I want to send this card out. So she didn't write in, write in the card so I could use it again. Isn't that sweet? I love it. I don't think I'm going to use it, Joyce. It's too pretty. I'm going to keep it here in my shop for at least a year. <laughs> All right. And then look at this one. Oh, my gosh. Now, this is the type of card I made last week, and Barbara Chandler jumped on it. And she was kind enough to send me a message. And um, look at how cute she used that special little bee in the dies that we had uh, a while back. Isn't that darling? So those, both those cards made me really happy. I love receiving cards in the mail or just pictures of um, your creations after you watch my Facebook Lives. If you've made something, feel free to share it with me. I'd like to see what you've done. I'm starting off this card tonight. Ah, you want to see the card. I know that. All right, here we go. Look at this. Is that not sweet? And I put the sentiment down at the bottom on this card. So we could write dad or your husband's name, your son's name, grandpa's name, whoever's name you want to put this up here, write your little message and then say happy Father's Day if you'd like. But look at the, um, the designer series paper and the dies just make this suit just like that. Isn't it cute? You can send, give that to your boss. You can give any, any man for any reason. But if you have no reason to make a card with a suit like that, I'm going to show you many, many more things you can do with it, okay? But this specific card started with a base that measures five and a half by eight and a half. This cardstock was cut in half, and those are the measurements. So you simply don't ask me why I flip it over every time. It's a habit. <laughs> Both sides are exactly the same, but it's just a habit we all have to turn our card over. And there is our card base, just like that, okay? Then I have another piece. This is a four by five and a half long. So it's as long as the card base, but not quite as wide. And you're gonna notice all the little um, lines in it. Well, I didn't want you guys, 
most of you guys know how to use the Simply Score tool. So I didn't want to completely bore you with that part of it. But in case I have anybody that's new, I wanted to make sure that they know how to do this. So I laid my cardstock on my Simply Score tool. And I take the, um, the, the tool that comes, the stylus that comes with the tool, and I go right up to the little grooves at the top. And I just go back and forth for a second to make sure I'm in the grooves and I pull down. And I did that all the way across the paper, but I'm gonna do it a few more times just so you can see how it works. If you give this one, two, three, and then pull down, you, will, you won't jump out of the grooves and you won't be frustrated with this tool. And look how your paper goes from completely smooth like this to ribbed like that. Isn't that great? I love this technique. It, it can really, really um, dress up a card. So I wanted to dress up my man's suit by having a ribbed shirt. I didn't know if you noticed that when I showed it to you at the beginning. So see, that's what I did with that. Okay, so let's do the rest of this now. I'm gonna set this over to my right. And I tell you that I'm setting it over to my right because when I lose it, you guys can say, Bev, it's on your right. I'm gonna get my um, Mickey, which is my larger tool tonight. And I have platform one, two, and three laid out on my machine. And I have a piece of the designer series paper cut at four, and a quarter by five and a half. And I'm gonna lay that on onto the platforms. And I'm going to get the dies. These here is, it's called suit and tie dies. There's the item number. And they are all in this little envelope. And I am going to take out this one. There's both sides of it. And I'm just gonna lay it, my dies, I'm gonna lay it so it's over the paper just a hair and try to get it evenly spaced in the middle, same amount of space on both sides if you can. And then put in the top plate number three and run it through my Mickey. Now, if you guys are wondering, if you're new to my page and you're wondering why I'm calling this machine Mickey, it's because one of my customers called, the, the little machine is called a mini, and she said she called her larger machine Mickey, and so I thought that was cute, and so that's what I'm doing too, calling my larger machine Mickey. So now it's cut out the lapel and the shirt, those two pieces. I'm gonna put them over here with the other ones. And I'm gonna save this little scrap right here because I'm gonna use that piece to make my pocket. In the dies, there's also this cute and it's stitched pocket and it will fit right there in that area for you. There's the pocket, and you guys can see the shape really well, but you might not be able to see the stitching because the, the paper, I was gonna say the fabric is tweed, but here's one in white so you can see how well it stitches. Isn't that cute? Okay, so put that with the rest of the clothing. And now I want to make the collar. So let's go back to the shirt. See how there's a collar here? I'm gonna make that now. We need a scrap piece of white cardstock. So here's my scrap. And I'm going to put the tie on here too. Here's the tie die, but I'm only gonna place it on here partially and I'll show you why. 
I don't even need that much, but I'm just gonna just gonna do it that way for now. So here's the collar. And here's part of the t of the tie. I'm just going to use this end. See what happens when you place it in, in the pocket. It looks like a handkerchief. So, back to the card. See there. Okay. Now I'm going to use the tie one more time, and I have a scrap of the In Good Taste Designer Series paper. And I'm gonna lay the complete tie on here this time. And I could have done them all at once, like had a piece of scrap here and did the, the collar and, and you know a few things at the same time, but I just wanted to show you all the pieces. Okay, so there's the tie. Look at that, isn't that cute? And my suit is pretty much all one color. His jacket and his tie and everything is matchy-matchy. But you definitely, if you look back in the catalog, if you definitely see that they made the ties different colors and that type of thing, which works great. Okay, so let's get all our pieces over here. Here's the pocket, here's the handkerchief. Here's the collar. All right. So let's assemble. I'm going to take my liquid glue and I am just going to place it lightly but cover all areas of the shirt. Hi, Shirley. Welcome. And this piece is as long as the base, and so you want to try to line that up as best you can. Okay, and then I'm just going to lay this down without glue right now, just so I can see how his shirt's lining up. And then I'm going to take the collar And set it down and look to see, yes, is that where you want it? No, yes, yes, okay. And I'm gonna go to my dimensionals. And this is a new um, page of dimensionals and you'll notice I have lines across the, all of them. And that's just because when I put them on my projects, I can tell if I pulled the backing off or not um, because there's a line on them. So I'm going to put these extra, I took four off right now, so I'm going to take these extra two and put them on the back of the lapel. So sometimes if you don't have a line on there, you might say, did I pull the backing off or did I not pull the backing off? So we're going to put it this way. And then you're going to check that you have it the right way by putting your tie in here and making sure it all shows well. Okay. See what it would look like like that, that would be wrong. So just before you glue things down, make sure you have it right. Okay, so now I can take the backings off of the collar. And then line up the top with the top. And I always explain that these, these parts take me a little bit longer on camera because I have the camera in my face. All right, so I'm gonna slide that tie under. And I think I want a dimensional under the, the wider part of the tie also. And I'm putting it at an angle because there is a a peeled, I call it peeled dimensional under there, so I didn't want it to stick before I got it in the right spot. And now I can put the shirt on. 
Okay. I'm going to put this shirt on flat. So again, we'll do what we did to the, uh, this is the jacket. We'll put glue on the jacket just like we put it on the shirt on the back. And then again, you want to pay attention. It's the same length as the base, and so you want to pay attention to lining things up as well as you can. But the glue gives you a minute to play, so if you need to adjust, you can. Okay. I'm going to place my handkerchief. There is a front and a back. See the little, can you see the little ribbed edge around there? And then that was, that's the back. So I'm just gonna place this on here like that. Take my snips and cut off what I don't need. And then I'm gonna take a mini glue dot and place it on the handkerchief. and stick it in the pocket. Couple of more dimensionals. But I'm not gonna pull the backing off because I'm not sure where I want to place this yet. I wanna get the lapel on first. Okay, for the lapel, couple of more dimensionals at the top, right here at the little V angle. And then I said I use the mini ones also because it tapers down. So where it gets narrower, you need a, a smaller um, dimensional. And then I want some dimension, uh, dimensionals here, but we don't have that shape, do we? So I'm gonna take my snips and I'm gonna make my own. I'm gonna go a little bit wider on the edge and then I'm gonna taper down. See that? one. Then I'm going to come over here and do the same thing. A little bit wider and taper down. Then pull the backing. And set it right there. Okay, let's turn it over and see what this does. How do we like it? And you can stretch it out until it's correct. All right, so I'm gonna pull off the backings now. Hi, Marilyn. I just looked up. I don't know if I've missed any comments or not. If I have, I will scroll back later and watch them and reply. Okay. So, the sticky is off the back. So you can pick it back up as long as you haven't pressed down hard. So I'm laying it down gently and then once I'm okay with where they are, I will press. Okay. Just a bunch of little good habits to get into. There's the pocket. I think I want it about there. Is this not too easy, you guys? And there we go. So for the inside, on this one, I'm gonna stamp at the top. This one I stamped at the bottom. Happy Father's Day. It comes in the stamp set that coordinates with the dies. And it says, have a happy Father's Day handsome. I'm using Knight of Navy. And this piece of cardstock is four inches wide and five and a quarter inches long. It's the standard layer piece for inside your, your cards. 
Now I find that my stamp, see this? I keep getting ink right here on the edge. So I'm gonna check my stamp and I'm trying to get that off. And then stamp. If I wouldn't have checked, I might have had a halo. We don't want halos if possible. Hold your stamp in place for a second. I'm scared to put my hand down because I got ink on my fingers. And there you go. But there's a lot more sentiments in this stamp set. There's a happy birthday, a thank you, the world's greatest dad, and you're the best. And I have to tell you about the you're the best in a minute. My husband had a fit when I showed him what I made with you're the best. <laughs> oh, it was so funny. You'll understand when I show you. Okay. So again, go to our liquid glue. And uh, for those of you are new with me, yes, this is my adhesive that, that I favor, that I use the most because it's so inexpensive and it goes so far. I love the Stamp and Seal Plus and I do use that for boxes and, and items that need a strong adhesive, but I save it for that. Otherwise, I just use this liquid glue. It's the best. So I can give one of my kids this card since my dad's gone, but isn't that the cutest? And they can give it to their husbands or something, although none of my son-in-laws dress like this. <laughs> Hi, Diane. All right, so I pride myself in figuring out what else we can make with Stampin' Up! product that is specifically meant for you know, masculine cards for neckties and suits and that type of thing. What else can we do with this? Well, I thought the little bow tie could be made into a bow for a girl. I love bows. And so I did an all white card with a little bit of uh, texture in it and it just turned it sweet to a little girl's card. Two little bows, two little pearls, and then open it up and use that happy birthday and the balloon punch and make a sweet little birthday card for a little girl. Completely different than the suit and tie, right? So then I was actually on the phone and I got carried away with bows. And so I wanted to see what this, because this designer paper is in the Love You Always suite. So I wanted to see if I made a card base and covered the front instead of with a folder, um, used it with a designer series paper. So I didn't do the inside on this one, but these are, Awful feminine and very easy. Yes, Debbie, very, very easy. Okay. So then I decided let's go back to this folder because I like to teach you guys how to use things many different ways, right? And let's go back to this lapel. And there's another, there's another die in the set. I think it's to make suspenders, which I haven't done yet, but I have a grandson that wears suspenders. So look at this one, long stitching. Even you could make this card, Diane. Yes, you could. <laughs> and so I wanted to use this one and I used it a bunch of times after I started using it and the cutest buttons. So buttons can be for girls, boys, men, anything, anything that needs buttons on it. If you're a sewer, if you're a seamstress. Okay, so then I used, oops, sorry. I made a girl's blouse with this. And this is where I use the strawberry punch and the, it, it has the leaves in it. Here's the buttons and here's those long stitched pieces on there. Isn't that sweet, you guys? You're the best, you're the best, you're the best. And I rounded the corners. So another female card instead of just masculine. All right, so then I have to tell you how I came about what the next, the next part. <laughs> when I first saw this stamp set, I thought of baseball bats. I didn't even see a necktie. 
Thanks, Cindy. I saw baseball bats. I am not kidding you. And then I started thinking, oh, it's a necktie. Oh, okay. It's because it's pointy here. And one of my cards actually has a mistake. But when I thought baseball bats, we're Giants fans. So look at that. The necktie is baseball bats. <laughs> Oh, Diane, you're too kind. You're too kind. So, craft cardstock and cut out two of the ties and then go to your triple, your detailed triple punch and turn it over and put your baseball bats, your baseball bats, your neckties into this corner rounder slot. See, there's a flower, there's a circle, and there's a corner rounder. Ah, Papa gets baseball and pinky. Yep, he does, Sherry. Um, so you just stick it in. See, can you see it there? You can see the cardstock in there. And then you punch. And it almost completely rounds it except for this tiny little point right there, which is no big deal. Gone. Now, see what I did, gone, and then I could have struggled, I'm right-handed, and went over here, but instead, let's make everything easy, just turn it over, gone, and you've rounded to a baseball bat. Now, baseball's a dirty little sport, you get all full of dirt and stuff, so I took my watercolor pencils, the brown, and the real red, and I just scribbled some dirt here. See this? Scribbled some dirt there at the top. Grab my blends, the blender pens, because blends are colors. These, this is clear. This helps you blend. I don't know if I got any comments. I wasn't looking up, sorry. I saw Sherry's. And then you just smooth out that dirt. Look at that. And your baseball bat looks like you used it a few times. And then I put dimensionals on the back of them. And uh, I put dimensionals on all three, one, two, three on the first bat. And then the second bat, one and two, because the middle already is over the lifted up back one. So you just need two there. The Giants, now we're from California. So our baseball team here in San Francisco is the Giants, and Ken and I are Giants fans, and their colors are orange and black, just in case you didn't, didn't know that. And then I used a, a one-inch circle punch. It is retired, but if you have a, a circle punch around this size, you're going to take some scrap white paper, and you're going to just punch out a circle. Well, actually, punch out two. And you're going to use one of the circles as a guide. And you're going to lay it onto the baseball. Take your red watercolor pencil. Go Giants, yes. Oops, I went a little far on that one. It's all right. I'll just show you how to, how to do it. You'll get the drift. And that's your baseball. And then I just made little X's for stitches. I'm not an artist by any means, way, shape, or form. Um, but there is an old baseball set. Debbie has it. So if you have a baseball, you know, if you kept one of the sports sets, you might already have a baseball. There you go. And then, you know, for if you have a grandson that starts t-ball or a college student that's in baseball, plays baseball, any sports, a daughter, that was sexist of me, a granddaughter, a daughter that um, plays baseball, there you go. Well, that's the Giants, but also in California, we have the A's, and they're in Oakland. So remember I mentioned that I wanted to take you back to using the always uh, stuff on page um, 11 of the mini? Well, in the always dies... There's all there's the word always, so it's a die that cuts out the word word always. Look at that A. 
If that doesn't look like the A's emblem for the baseball team, I don't know what does. And then we have love, and that has an L. So I took both of those and ran them through the, um, the Mickey. Look at the A's. This is their colors, of course, gold, green and gold. And there's the A's emblem. And then we also south in Los Angeles. This is where Ken had a fit because the Giants and the Dodgers are rivals. And my son-in-law is a Dodger fan. And my husband and him fight, 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 fight. Well, there's enough of that going on in the world. So I'm thinking, we're sports. It's, it's a game. Who cares? I'm making this. And I said, you're the best on this one. And Ken had a cow. There's the L.A. with the love and the A, and the a from the always. I did an L.A. Dodgers. You're the best. And I will give that to my son-in-law. <laughs> Yes, I forgot to round the, I forgot you found the mistake, Lori. I forgot to round these and I didn't want to tear the card apart to do it. And I said, oh, I can't give that to anybody. I just leave it here as my sample because um, I forgot to round that one, but I did round the others. <laughs> so yes, you found my boo-boo. I was so mad at myself. But yes, yeah, see, you can turn this stamp set completely into a sports or... You can have, what I do with my other cards? Oh, they're there. Or you can have the suit and tie. You can have a blouse. You can have just bow ties. Little bows for little girls. And that's all I got done with it. But I think that's quite a bit. I didn't want to throw you guys completely loopy saying, oh my goodness, there's a lot going on there. But my husband was, and you know, he, he always says, oh yeah, honey, that, that's nice, that's nice. You know, kind of like, don't bother me. But he really, really did like these um, baseball cards. So if you have sports fans in your family, there you go. You're an A's fan, Diane? Well, good. Oh, thank you, Annie. Annie says I hit a home run. Woohoo! You guys, um, we'll see you Tuesday. Remember, I'm on it Tuesdays now at 1 o'clock. So I'll have a whole different ideas for you on Tuesday. I hope you can come. And then um, someone will win one of these cards. Again, there's so many I'm going to have to let you choose because I'm not going to give you the, the A's card if you're a Dodger fan. And I'm not going to give you a girl's card if you want the man's card. So you're going to get to pick. Okay? Um, I think that's all I have for you. If you have any questions... Just let me know. Oh, I'm glad you like them, Debbie. Love for grandsons. Yeah, Virginia, for sure. Yeah. You're welcome, Robin. Okay, you guys, have a nice week. Well, I'll see you Tuesday, hopefully. And I got my um, paper pumpkin kit, too, so I'm working on that also. Take care, guys. Thank you for all the hearts. That makes my, this makes my day. Bye-bye.